We begin tonight here in Highland Park, Illinois, and we have breaking news. Authorities just announced seven counts of first-degree murder against a 21-year-old suspected of shooting dozens here at a 4th of July parade in this suburb of Chicago. Tonight, we are learning the names of six of the victims that were killed, and just today, a seventh died from their wounds. The oldest, 88. The two youngest victims, parents of a young boy. They were together at the parade. And now that child is parentless. The investigation here is just getting started, but we are learning new details tonight, including the suspect's previous encounters with police. And the gun violence crisis isn't unique to Highland Park. In the 30 hours since the shooting here, there have been an additional six mass shootings across America, from Oakland, California, to Queens, New York. We have a lot of news to get to tonight, and CBS's Chris Van Cleef is here. Chris, good evening. What can you tell us about the latest with the investigation? Well, Adriana, police are telling us that the suspect actually legally owned five firearms. Some were found in his home. One was found in the vehicle that he was driving at the time he was arrested. And while he is talking to police, there remain a lot of unanswered questions. Tonight, 21-year-old Robert Bobby Cremo III is facing seven counts of first-degree murder. Police say he sprayed more than 70 rounds down upon hundreds of people watching Highland Park's 4th of July parade. Seven were killed, 38 others were wounded, including at least four children. This is the suspect after the shooting, wearing what appears to be women's clothing as a disguise to make his getaway. We do believe Cremo pre-planned this attack for several weeks. Uh, he brought a high-powered rifle to this parade. He accessed the roof of a business via a fire escape ladder and began opening fire. Police say the shooter dumped that gun. It was similar to an AR-15. Officers caught Cremo more than eight hours after the massacre, just five miles away. In the car, another rifle. Investigators spent today collecting evidence and clearing leftover items along the parade route. Lizzie Kennedy came back to the scene today. This is the Kennedy family Monday being escorted to safety by heavily armed FBI agents. My daughter is only eight and she was screaming, please mommy, I don't want to die. Sorry. She screamed, please mommy, I don't want to die. And I'm like, you're not going to die. We have to go. We have to run. Uh, it was a gruesome scene. I, Dr. I Lauren Schechter escaped the gunfire and went back to help. I'm a surgeon. I've worked in trauma. Um, the wounds we saw were, uh, I mean, were, were military level wounds. It wasn't a typical civilian handgun wound that you'd see come into the emergency room. These were, these were devastating injuries. You essentially became a battlefield medic. Well, we did what we could do with, with what we had. While the suspect's motive remains a mystery, police are investigating his disturbing online history. Certainly seems like there were a lot of warning signs. Did people see those warning signs? Were they missed? Did this slip through the cracks? You know, unfortunately, I think there are a lot of people who use social media as a way to gain attention. I'd like to focus on the fact, frankly, that this was a gun that was apparently obtained legally, and we need to re-examine our laws. Cremo's uncle, Paul, no says he saw no warning signs. There's no indication that I've seen at all that would, would, would lead up to this. I am so sorry. I'm, uh, from the bottom of my heart, and I'm... I'm heart, very heartbroken. And Chris is back here with us. Chris, how did police find him, and what was he doing for the eight hours when he was on the run? Well, the suspect left the gun behind. That allowed the ATF and others to do a rapid gun trace to help identify where the gun came from. At the same time, the FBI and other investigators were piecing together a video timeline. That gave them an idea of who they were looking for, the vehicle they were looking for. The suspect went to his mother's house nearby and then drove to neighboring Wisconsin and back into Illinois when he was spotted by police, pulled over, and eventually arrested. Chris Van Cleef, thank you so much.